Hey guys, welcome back to Project Synchro. Thanks so much for being patient over the past two months. Uh, I know it's been a while since the last update uh, that I posted from my phone and said something like, hey, I know I broke my arm, but I'm still gonna get a lot of work done on the car. Well, I didn't get so much work done on the car, but I have gotten a lot of work done around the house. Some of it's Project Synchro related and some of it isn't, but uh, I'm gonna show you through all of it anyway. So uh, we'll start with a lot of the work that I did to the garage. If you notice, uh, None of the shelving is, is present anymore, and I've tried to get in kind of a mode with the garage that I don't want any storage out here. I want the garage to be strictly a workspace and uh, uh, not really clutter things up with a bunch of shelving and whatnot, mostly because I have accumulated through, through the, the grace of others and through sales and auctions and whatnot a, a fairly good collection of tools at this point. It's, it's kind of a nice feeling that... Uh, uh, I do have quite a bit of stuff, but I didn't really pay all that much for it, for, for those of you who are wondering. Um, I do have my nice uh, new TIG welder and the old tried and true MIG welder over here, as well as my drill press. I've moved all the stuff into this corner that's, that's more of like a, like a hard uh, dirt making or, 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 or dust making fabrication work, so that eventually what I'll be able to do is put up a, a little railing around here and have an industrial curtain that'll come across this area. So if I need to do a whole lot of grinding and I am going to mount uh, a nice shelf over here to put up my little sander that you see me using all the time and a nice bench grinder so that I don't have to keep getting them out on the table and whatnot. But, but all of that chaos uh, uh, inducing work will happen, sort of a, have a barrier between uh, uh, this room or area and the rest of the garage. So uh, that's just a little bit, I just got this set up. As you can probably tell, there's no electrical ran over here. Since everything's sort of on wheels and mobile, I wanted to just get a feel for the space before I started running hard conduit and putting outlets in. But uh, that's pretty much what's going on over here. It should stay about like this. And uh, you know, if I do decide I wanna move something around, most of all this stuff's pretty easy to wheel out of the way. So if you'll follow me on inside, um, I think it'll make sense what I did with the shelving. So. The uh, past month or so after I finished working on, uh, or after I finished with my broken arm, uh, I had my only other roommate uh, w was finally able to move out uh, onto his own, and now I have the home to myself, at least for the foreseeable future here. And uh, my plan for this, uh, since this is a split level home, I have two living rooms. And uh, a guy living on his own doesn't really need two living rooms for anything, so I figured. Uh, uh, a downstairs living room and a split level home. It doesn't really make sense to have carpet down there anyway. I kind of worry, you know, if you get any water down here, it's just dingy. Carpet in a basement feels weird to me. So um, what I decided to do was to convert this into a work area. As you can see, we stepped right in out of the garage into this work area. And uh, what I'm planning on doing is building two nice little rolling and folding work tables so that this whole center area that you'll see is just full of nonsense right now will become a nice little work area for electrical stuff and, and things that don't necessarily make a lot of smells or noise or, or sparks or, or chaos like what goes on out in the garage. So this will probably be where we'll start to shoot uh, doing wiring, harness, and, and, and miscellaneous you know, panel things and, and little odds and ends and, and videos like that we'll, we'll do in the basement rather than in the garage because since this being the Midwest and and it being the middle of the summer, it's, it's very hot and muggy. It's not so much out in the garage, but it is really nice to be able to come in. Uh, as you can see, I'm still in my work clothes here and uh, just work on some things and not have to worry about getting dirty, although my garage is fairly clean uh, in the garage itself. So um, you can see these shelves are over here. I've purchased more of the same bins. Those are Home Depot, I believe, uh, 12 gallon flip top clear totes on Home Depot uh, uh, wire rack shelving. I believe they're on sale right now. I think they're $6 and change. So it's, it was really trivial and totally made sense to go out. And if you have the opportunity to get all of your stuff in the same sort of bin, not just for someone who's, who's a little retentive like me, man, that is so nice to just have everything 
uh, uh, in front of you and, and in the same bin, even if it's not so clearly labeled and organized, it's really just easy to move around like that too. So I'll continue to expand that. These tires probably won't be here. They'll be uh, sort of not so out in the open because while this is sort of a work area, I think that is a little bit hokey to have tires out in a work area. It looks a little too, you know, craftsman-y, trying too hard kind of thing. So um, this will hopefully become a nice little work area. And uh, then we'll continue upstairs and you can see what I've done with my other living room. So after my roommate moved out, I was pretty much without furniture, although I have plenty of tools and car parts and, and uh, motorcycle nonsense and what have you to go around. I really didn't own any furniture other than a bed and a dresser and that was pretty much it. You know, you move around a lot during college and there was no need for me to hold on to a lot of stuff like that. I, I had my essentials, which were my tools, and, and I moved those around. So once he moved out, I found myself without anything. So I used that as an opportunity to get what I want. As much as people knock Ikea furniture, I think it makes sense to anyone who knows me uh, uh, how right Ikea furniture feels uh, uh, to a sort of uh, uh, maker crowd. I don't know, I'm also a little bit more modern than not, and, and I like the idea of flat pack stuff, even if, you know, uh, wood like this isn't really wood. It's just veneer and cardboard and some birch and what have you in there. But uh, I enjoy it quite a lot. So uh, not only did I finally start to get some furniture to fill the space up, what I did do is paint in here and removed the absolutely awful popcorn ceiling. Now, had I not pointed upwards, even if you were in my living room right now, you would have never noticed that the popcorn ceiling was done, but it's one of those things that you just sort of feel in a space where you're in a house and there's popcorn ceiling and, and it just feels very dated. So it's, it's something that I wanted to take the opportunity to do while I didn't have so much stuff and, and furniture uh, cluttering up the space. So uh, once that uh, paint and ceiling and what have you was complete, I was finally able to get a couple deals on some furniture and set up a nice little living space. Um, as you can tell, there's, it's a little bit automotive themed and it is very, very uh, OCD IKEA themed, but uh, I enjoyed it a lot. Um, I, I kind of got my uh, IKEA thrill out in this area. And then uh, when we move over to the dining room, you'll see I, I did really have this, uh, this itch for the IKEA I believe it was the Morbi Longa table, and it was this seven, yeah, seven, eight hundred dollar uh, big fake oak veneer dining room table that was really cool, but it had this, this good vibe and this good uh, leg design, but I didn't want to pay that much money for it. So I found a deal at Lumber Liquidators on a big six by three slab of walnut butcher block. Uh, uh, used for an island or a countertop or something, and it was, it's called a Builder Special. So it had a, well, it didn't have any finish on it at all. It was just barely rough sanded, not filled, a lot of voids in it and whatnot. Bring this in, and it, as you remember downstairs, that, that uh, area didn't have a bunch of nonsense in it, so I was just able to set the slab up and sand it down to, to a nice uh, uh, grit and then finish it with some nice satin uh, polyurethane uh, finish. So it's a nice dining room table. And then the legs, I actually got some scrap steel the same, from the same place that I got all my steel to do all the roll cage and all the work on the car. This is actually scrap steel. I think I paid $40 for 24 feet of it or something. And it's just rectangular steel. And since uh, I hadn't really used the TIG welder since I had broken my arm and made that last little video where I just kind of pieced a couple of things together and whatnot, uh, I decided I needed to practice on something. So I TIG welded these legs together. I riv nutted in some, some M8 riv nuts in the bottom and uh, put little McMaster car uh, leveling feet on them. I have these uh, walnut blocks that have M8 T nuts in them to sort of space the legs out away from the table. And, and, and I don't know, I, it, it's got a nice industrial vibe to it. I'm not an artist. I don't get art. I hate it when, the, the, I think the George Costanza line is, I, I don't like art because it has to be explained to me. And then after it's explained to me, I have to have someone explain the explanation. But I don't know, this, this table, uh, I feel like it looks nice and clean and uh, uh, it's nice because I built it myself. So 
hopefully, I know that the past two months weren't a waste. I do feel bad when I come home and, and uh, have to walk past the car in the garage and realize that I haven't made any progress on it in the past two months. But I promise you that is about to change. Uh, I have a small vacation coming up here. And once I get back from the vacation and get some of that noise sorted out downstairs, then uh, we're going to go back into working on the car. We've got a lot of stuff lined up, ready to go uh, to fab up the brake system, which is a totally custom brake system. If you saw, I posted a few photos of the calipers before. They're all nice Willwood calipers that we've done a lot of uh, math on to make sure we get the right ones. We're going to start doing a lot of work on the wiring. I'm really excited to work on wiring. I've been actually not <laughs> uh, looking forward to doing wiring. A lot of people complain about it, but it's something that just uh, uh, feels right. I did electrical work way before I was into cars, and it's always been one of my favorite hobbies. Uh, so hopefully you're excited to start seeing some stuff again, just as excited as, as Kyle and I are to start making videos again. Uh, if there's anything you want to see or anything around here you want to know more about, or if you want to see videos about weird stuff that's not necessarily specific to the car, uh, please let us know in the comments below. And once again, thank you for all your likes, shares, subscriptions. Thank you for all your messages over the past two months. Hey, just want to make sure you're still working on this project. Uh, what happened? That's, that's nice to see. Again, I really feel bad that we're not putting anything out as of late, but it's, it's nice when people remember that, that we're around and, and uh, enjoy seeing what we have. So uh, thank you guys so much again, and uh, we'll see you soon. Glad I at least did the living room first, because uh, people would be wondering why I was bothering renovating my laundry room before I did the rest of the house. This is also the least Project Synchro-worthy Project Synchro video ever. <laughs>